Okay, so I want to show you guys one of the best programs that you can possibly learn to use, and that is Image Magic. Uh, and actually, one of the reasons I want to do this is because I just now finished a video on GIMP. I haven't published it yet, but I know when I do, people are going to complain about me using some kind of GUI application. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, Image Magic, which is uh, at its core, it's a series of terminal commands and other operations and stuff like that, which can modify, that can create and modify images. So you can basically do image editing or image manipulation. Uh, from the command line. Now, what are the advantages of that? I mean, for a lot of things, you, you're going to want to use something like GIMP and manually mo modify something, but uh, Image Magic is fantastic for automating things. It's fantastic for... Actually, you know what? I don't even want to list things. I want to just show you how it works, and how, you can probably come up with different ways to use it. So I actually have pulled up here uh, an image magic script that I use all the time, and that is for my lock screen. Let me show you how that works. So I have a shortcut on my keyboard, um, which happens to be super plus X, which will lock up my screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and press it. Now what this script actually does is, well, as you can see, my screen is not really visible anymore. It sort of is. You can sort of see that you can see that my face is on it, but all of the text has been sort of um, it's not really readable, uh, have a nice little swirl, and there's even this nice, well I can't really move my mouse, but there's a nice little lock icon here. So I'm gonna log, I'm gonna log back in for a second. This is my lock screen, and I actually have it generated by Image Magic. Um, and this is what this script, script is up here, so I'm gonna show you how this works, really just the Image Magic part, and um, show you the kind of, give you an idea of the kind of things you can do in Image Magic. Uh, so this is probably going to be first on a couple videos on it. So anyway, um, the main command you use in Image Magic is convert. And I will say you can, of course, check the manual for all the enormous amount of things that you can do uh, with convert. It's absolutely crazy. Um, but we're going to talk about some, at least just the stuff that I use here. So here's what my script literally does. First, it uses scrote up here to take a screenshot. If you don't know what scrote is, it's just the you know command that takes a screenshot. Um, so it saves it in temp screen. And then what it does is it converts that raw input. Um, and what it does is it adds this paint option. Let's go ahead and play around with what this is. Now, I have uh, a couple files in this folder. I have this image here, um, this village thing, and I have this uh, thinking emoji. Um, so I'm going to play around. I'm going to go to this folder, and I'm going to play around with them. So first, let's play with the paint option here. What exactly does paint do? Um, I am going to uh, run the command convert and then village, and I'm going to give it the paint option, and I'm going to say paint one, and I'm going to give, you know, put the output as, you know, village underscore p or something like that. Um, so if you just run that, uh, we can look at the village file, and if I go to the village painted file, you'll see that it's sort of a little blurry. It's not the same thing as a typical blur. It maintains the color. Uh, it just sort of changes it a little bit. Now, this isn't very visible in a JPEG file that's like something in the real world, but if I up this uh, paint value, let's say I up it to something like 20 and run that again. Uh, it's going to take a second because the higher it is, the longer it takes, but you know, it's going to get a more of what we actually want, uh, you know, you know, we, it's going to modify the image more. Now if we wait a second for that, it's actually taking a lot longer than I thought, but uh, now that that's done, you'll see that it has this very nice, it's almost like a watercolor view to it. Uh, and the higher the, the value that you give it, the more sort of distorted, I mean it's distorted, but it's still like good looking. That's why I use paint uh, for this, uh, for my screen lock. So that's what that does. Now let's also, let's also try the uh, swirl command. Uh, where, where is it? Yeah, swirl. Uh, so let's take our other image, which is, you know, the thinking emoji, uh, and I'm going to convert uh, thinking, and I'm going to swirl it, let's say, uh, let's say 30 degrees, well, negative 30 degrees, we can do that. And then I'm going to do thinking, I'll put it to thinking underscore s or something like that. Uh, so once I do that, it'll take a second. Uh, but you will see that now the emoji has been slightly distorted. I mean, it was already distorted, but now it's a little more. Uh, we can actually up that value. So let's up it to something much bigger. Let's say 120 or something like that. See what that looks like. Now it's very distorted. 
so now this is much more distorted. So this is what swirl does uh, does to you here. Um, so now we've, we've talked about these two different operations. Now, of course, you can run both of them at the same time. So if I take the village, uh, I can paint it. Let's paint it, you know, give it four, some smaller value. I can also swirl it simultaneously. So let's swirl it, uh, I don't know, 180 degrees or something like that. Uh, and see what that output looks like. Now you'll see that there's a big swirl on it uh, and it's also been painted. Now this is basically what I am doing uh, for my um, you know for my lock screen here uh, with one addition that is let's go back to my lock screen actually uh, you'll see that I also have a little lock in the middle and that is actually not part of you know my screen locking program that's actually manually added there by image magic. Uh, and that's something that I can easily uh, easily add in as well. So if I basically what this command notice what this command is doing, uh, it's taking this as an input. It's then performing paint and swirl on it, and then it's taking this as an input. This is the like picture of the lock that I have, um, and it's giving that additional uh, options. It's saying gravity center, which basically means center that thing, uh, and composite in Mate. That's for actually uh, having this kind of composite image. Now let's let's actually run these manually. Let's say we want to take let's say we want to take the thinking emoji and we want to superimpose it over this picture, oops, over this picture of a village or something like that. Let's actually get rid of these uh, these two other files that we made. Um, now to do that it's pretty simple. simple. Uh, we'll just say convert and I'll say village and then I'll say um, what was it? Uh, center, uh, gravity. So gravity center Actually, let me double check to see if that's right. Yes, it is. Um, and then I will put in the thinking emoji. And then we'll say output uh, is going to be the name of our output file. And I'm going to run that. That was nice and quick. Um, oh, oops, forgot to actually add the composite uh, option. But yeah, that's what it does. If, it, if you give it multiple files and don't tell it to do a composite, it's just going to output them again. That's not what we want. But, uh, you know, mistakes help you learn. Uh, so we're going to do composite. Uh, and mat, and then we are going to uh, output it. And once we have that, we will, oh, okay, that's not how I, oh, I guess the thinking emoji is enormous. Let's actually shrink that thinking emoji down a little bit. So we could open up GIMP and manually do it, but that's a huge waste of time. What we can do is just say thinking, and I'll say resize, and let's say we'll resize it to uh, you know, the Y coordinate, or is it the X coordinates? Who cares? We'll just make it, um, so what you can do is you can manually specify some kind of size, um, or you can just have one of the either width or height. I'll just put 300 here, and that's going to guess the other uh, value of it. So I'll resize it, and I'll say think resized. Uh, so now that's that, and that should give us, yeah, so that I think that's a much smaller picture. We'll, we'll find out. So now if we run this command we ran a second ago where we're converting, we're putting both of these together, I'm going to replace this with um, the resized image. Now I'm going to run that, and that is going to give us, yeah, that's what we want. Okay, so here we have it. So we have a background image, and this thing is superimposed over it. So that's sort of what we want. Now, what I have from my lock screen, again, is just a combination of the composite and these operations, the swirl and the paint operations on the first input. Um, just to be clear, actually, we can go ahead and put it in there just to, you know, be super clear about it. So if I paint, let's say I'll paint three and I'll swirl, you know, uh, 180 degrees or something like that um, and then run that. And that will give us, yeah, so this is basically the same thing as my lock screen in the sense that you have a image superimposed over sort of a, a modulated uh, thing here. Uh, so that that's what we want to look for. So this is uh, sort of a tutorial, but really just to show you the kind of stuff you can do with image magic. And um, obviously this is really nice because the way I use it for my lock screen, it's not like I am manually editing the files, the, the screenshots that it takes. Um, but it, Image Magic just does everything automatically. It's very nice and very useful for other things. So I'll probably do more videos on this. But uh, you know, if you have any ideas, um, you know, shoot shoot them in the comments or some something. And I'll also provide a link 
Um, Chris Ocapinti actually did a series on Image Magic a little bit ago, just on some different commands. So I think I'll put that link in the description or as a comment or something like that. So check those out. Those are just nice to play around with. And I will say that uh, you can go to imagemagic.org slash capital U usage. And this is like the big manual with, you know, visual illustrations of all the great things you can do. Um, so definitely check this out. Uh, but anyway, so that's going to be about it for now. So I'll see you guys uh, next time.